Hi guys, welcome to part three where we are going to build the handrails. Okay, that's the last step we're gonna do here. Let's go back to our Rhino file. I'm gonna change the height of this building. I'm gonna make it a little shorter. This is tower height, let's say 1500. You know, just to make it more about the scale of uh, what the other building was. But anyway, so we're looking at this building. I wanna add handrails along this edge. Now, of course, uh, we know what the bottom of the handrail will be, right? So the bottom of the handrail will be along the slab edge, and we already have those as curves. So if you remember from the last couple of videos, if I isolate that, we have the slab boundaries, okay? So for the handrails, we know that the bottom of the handrail will be the slab boundary, and we can go back to the images, and you can kind of see, yeah, that's kind of obvious, you know, the bottom of that handrail is gonna be stuck along that slab, right? So that's fine. However, the top of the handrail is completely dependent on where these fins are, right? So the fins are pointing out and the handrail tries to, you know, like tuck on under that. And if it's, uh, you know, leaning back, the handrail kind of wraps over it. So the handrail really is like, you know, almost like shrink wrapped around these fins. And that's kind of the effect we're kind of looking for. So let's see how we can do that in Grasshopper. First thing I'm gonna do is really make this thin. It's kind of bothering me how thick this slab is, right? I mean, just for now, I'm gonna make this really tiny. I could, of course, you know, beef it up later, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it really, really skinny. So I have the bottom curve, looking for the top curve. So what we really need to do is figure out where on this curve the handrail is going to sit. And if I go back to the image, and of course, this is all interpretation, right? I'm going to imagine that the high handrail is the same height. Okay, so that's one thing we can imagine, that the handrail, no matter where you are, it's going to be the same height relative to the bottom of the floor. Maybe there's another image here of this project where we can see where that's happening. Yeah, so here in this elevation, you can see that the handrail, the top of the handrail is the same. So. If I can find a way to cut each of these fins at a fixed height above the slab, then, you know, I'm in pretty good shape. I have a way of figuring out how to make, or at least find those points and then start doing something with them. All right, let's go back to Rhino. All right, so in this case, what I need to do is first figure out where this line is, this outer exterior edge. And I have that, I have that curve over here although it was not labeled. So I'm going to label that curve now. Let's make sure this is it. Let's isolate that. Yep, these are definitely those exterior fin curves. So that's what I'm gonna call them. Sure, they have a different name, but we're gonna call them exterior fin edge, okay? All right, and that is the curve that's going in here to make you know the actual 3D of the fin, okay. So the exterior fin edge, we need to find out how to cut it exactly at a certain height above each slab. So first we need to figure out, okay, how do you actually cut a curve at a certain height? And the best way that I can think of doing that right now is by using a plane. So if I have a plane here, that plane is going to slice through all of these curves and figure out exactly where that point is, okay? That's a horizontal plane, so that's an XY plane, right? So if I double click and type XY, there's my plane. However, this plane is actually all the way down here at the origin. Okay, yeah, that's where it is. Really tiny plane over there. Ha, so what I need to do is move this plane up to each of these slabs locations, okay, and then set a certain height for it. Now we've done this before where we know which vector uh, we need to use to actually move these planes up. And that vector is back here. The vector is to move circle up from the last video. I can copy and paste this and actually want to make sure that's an input plane. What I did was just group it, give it a color, and I changed the wire type. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I like to do that just to stay organized. And I can go ahead and move the planes, that's the geometry to move, and move it using this vector. And you'll see that once I put that in, they're actually there. I can't really see them too well. What I could do is make those planes a lot larger. And the way to do that is by coming up here under display, going to preview plane size, 
and maybe making that a little bigger to 50. And you see that they're a lot more visible right now. However, they are sitting exactly at the bottom, right? They're on the floor slab level. What I need to do is set a handrail height. So let's say the handrail is coming about three feet or so, right? So that's about 36, maybe let's say 40 inches, right? You can say call this handrail height. Of course, you can change this later, right? So you're not stuck with that handrail. Again, you can move this. Now remember, these are planes, right? So the planes have moved here to the slab height. And now I'm moving the plane again for each plane in the Z direction by a fixed amount, which is the handrail height. And now you see that each one of these planes, if I hide the old ones, take the old ones out of the way, See, each of these is now in the middle of this slab here, right? And I can, of course, change that value using the slider and see where that lies. Now, let's use this plane and cut all those exterior edge lines, okay? Now, the way to do that, again, you can come up to the Intersect tab, okay? Go down to Physical, and you'll see that there is one called, oh, sorry, maybe it's under Mathematical. There it is, Curve and Plane, okay? So we're using the edge curves and cutting them with a plane. Now, where are the edge curves? Here they are, curve, exterior, fin, edge. That goes into the curve input. And now we need a set of planes. And I have a set of planes right here. If I bring them in, ta-da, you'll see that what it's done is it's taken each of those curves. Notice that the listing is different, right? This is actually coming in as each curve is its own list. Right, while the other input is coming in as a one list, right? Just one single list of a bunch of planes. And so what's gonna what's gonna happen is this component is gonna then take one curve, which is sorry, one list with one list. So this list only has one curve, so it's gonna take one curve with this entire list, then the next list, which again only has one curve with the entire list, and so on. So this is a great way to be able to take each curve and make sure that it is sliced, so to speak, or intersected with each and every plane. And what you'll get is a series of points like this. Now again, we can really do what we did earlier in a very similar fashion, use the polyline component, and see if when I connect the points to this polyline component, if it actually makes that ring or the handrail upper edge all the way around. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I plugged it in, and again, it's not working. Just like in the last video, we may have to trim the tree and cut it down a little bit, right? So remember, we had the trim, we had the flip matrix, and we had the uh, polyline component. Now, we may not need the flip matrix. It all depends. We'll see if we need it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is cut that tree down a little bit. Put that in and you'll see that it's actually creating a new set of vertical lines, right? If I isolate those, that's what they look like. That's not what we want. What we want is it not to go this direction, but the other direction, so we need to flip it, right? So that's why I copied the flip matrix component, just in case. Turns out we do need it, and use that instead. And you'll see that now it actually creates uh, the handrail portion wrapping around. Notice that there's a gap. Okay, now this gap is due to the fact that when you make a polyline, it's just going to connect points together and not necessarily close the curve. However, there is the option to do that. So close, if I hover over it, you see in the description it says false. I can always use a Boolean toggle, double click it to true, and set this to true. Now if I highlight polyline, you'll see that it's actually closed all those curves off, which is what you want go ahead and show everything now this is quite messy okay so I'm going to go ahead and start hiding a couple of things okay so what we have here is a series of curves okay one is down here at the slab level and one is up here at the handrail level all right, now how am I actually going to create a handrail between these two? It seems so strange. Now, 
you may be thinking, oh, well, let's just use the loft command, right? Well, let's see what happens if I use the loft command. So if I come back here to my polyline, which represents the handrail top edge, so I'm going to go ahead and create a curve and make sure I call that handrail top edge. Okay. And I want to loft these set of curves. Okay, again, I can use merge so I can combine this curve with another set of curves. This time I'm going to bring in the slab boundaries, right? Those have not changed. I can always copy and paste this. It's the same information. Bring it over. Now, notice that when I am merging, these are two different types of data streams. So that's a big no no. We definitely don't want that. Now, this is basically what it's doing is putting each item into an independent list. While on the other hand, this slab boundaries is just one list with multiple slabs in it, right? What we want to do is graph. Sorry, graph, misspell that. Graph this tree so that each of these items is in one list as well. And put that into the merge component. Let's see what the result looks like. Okay, so it did stitch them together. So it puts one curve uh, from one list, one curve from the other list into, uh, you know, independent lists with a pair of curves each. And if I run the loft component, you'll see that, well, really it's quite, uh, you know, there's some havoc going on over here. It's really not what we're looking for. If I just look at the loft by itself, you'll see that it really didn't create such a clean loft between the two curves. Well, one reason is that it doesn't really know when one curve starts and the other one ends. And so it's trying to just interpolate and figure out, well, I guess this is the type of result they're looking for when really it's not. So maybe this is not the best way to do it. So we've come uh, you know, halfway there by finding this top edge. And we thought, well, we know the bottom edge is the slab boundary. So why can't I just lock them together? Well, let's think about this. Maybe the best way to do this is by actually isolating different portions of the handrail. Okay, so for example, if I look at one portion of the handrail, if I zoom in over here, so this is the top edge of the handrail, and I know that because I can adjust the height, and you'll see that that curve moves up and down. Okay, so the top edge needs to go to this bottom edge. So maybe if there was a way for me to just isolate the bottom edge here, that would really help me figure out, um, you know, it'll create an independent little curve here that I could then loft, right? Well, I can get that curve actually by just taking this and if this was all the way down to zero. If I imagine this handrail height as zero, then basically I've done the exact same operations that I did up here, you know, intersecting with the, with the plane and figuring out where uh, those curves lie, right? except it would be on the ground level and then I can have another one at the handrail height level. And then maybe if I lock those two together, maybe that might work. So again, I have not done this before, right? So we're just learning as we're going. So what I'm trying to say is if I copy everything after here, wherever the handrail height is, so I come here and I'm just going to select every component that came after that. Well, just up to here, just up to the edge, up to where it creates the curve. I'm going to copy, Control C, and paste, Control V. Just bring that a little further down. Except this time, I'm just going to change the height and bring this down. I could bring it down to zero, but I'm going to bring it somewhere just above zero, just so I kind of see where it is and I'm not confusing two different curves. So now I want to loft these two curves together. Okay, so instead, of lofting with the rotated slab boundaries, which I am now going to delete, and hence delete this component as well. You have handrail top edge. I'm going to rename this handrail bottom edge and see if I can actually loft those two together. And turns out I can, right? And look at that, now we have our handrails. Again, it's a little difficult to see, 
So I like to use these components over here in order for me to be able to see something a little better. I have made a custom component for this, but for these tutorials, I figured it's just easier to show you by hand what it actually means. And here, here we have the handrail. Of course, the handrail, I may not want it to be solid, so I could, of course, change the color or change the opacity. Turn that down and make it a different color if I like, so maybe a blue, right? If it were glass, for example. I could hide some of the other curves. Start bringing in some other geometries. And that's how we would create the handrails. Now again, we can change the height of the handrails. Okay, so remember we had two sliders here. One was handrail height, which is controlling the top edge. And there was also one controlling the bottom edge, so to speak. So I, if I move that up, you see I make that really skinny handrail or so on. I'm going to just keep this at zero for now. And so call it handrail height. I'm just going to call it handrail bottom. And that's how we do that. Now, what you could do is, well, you can look at this and say, well, I see that there are actually, you know, these actual handrail lines here. Now, we could explore that a little further. I just don't want to populate my screen with thousands and thousands of lines. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to end it here and call it, right? So that's it. That's how uh, you can start creating something like this. So it's always a good exercise. Go ahead and when you see an interesting project online, just go ahead and try to think, well, how would you start modeling that? And how would you start, what parameters would you like to play around with? The only parameter here that we haven't really messed with too much is the slab dimension and the slab size, right? We've assumed a square and we've kind of just centered it and the square is still a square on each floor. You could change the dimensions of the square to maybe a rectangle. Maybe it's a different shape on each floor. I mean, there's so many different variations that you can go about this thing. But for now, I am going to leave this tutorial as is exactly just like this. So if you've watched so far, thank you so much. And if you like this video and you want to see more tutorials, well, let us know below. And of course, you can find out more about us, our podcast, and all the other things that we offer at lineweights.coffee. So check us out. Thank you, guys. Bye.